Hello everyone. I'm Jingyue from Renji Hospital, Shanghai Jiao Tong University School of Medicine. Today, I'm going to talk about a recent publication on Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Prognostic value of late gadium enhancement in predicting life-threatening arrhythmias in heart failure patients with implantable cardioverted defibrillators. A systematic review and meta-analysis. Before starting, I'd like to acknowledge the support from National Natural Science Foundation of China and the Shanghai Municipal Commission of Health Family Planning Excellent Young Talent Program. Life-threatening arrhythmias, including ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, are the main causes of sudden cardiac death in patients with ischemic and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. Implantable cardioverted defibrillator therapy reduces mortality from life-threatening arrhythmias and improves cardiac function in heart failure patients. It's recommended as primary prevention of sudden cardiac death in current guidelines. However, many of them do not benefit from it, with great procedure risks, NCD-related complications, and expensive downstream healthcare costs. Many studies have reported the association between LGE and major adverse cardiovascular events. LGE provides deep prediction predictive power of ventricular arrhythmias, cardiac and or cough death, and rehospitalization for heart failure patients. So we focused on patients underwent a procession of LCD and hypothesized that the presence of LGE would help predict the occurrence of life-threatening arrhythmias and MS. We received 323 studies after searching through uh, databases and removing the duplicates. 202 were excluded by title or abstract. After evaluating the remaining studies, 33 studies met our inclusion criteria. The data we extracted included author, year of publication, study design, inclusion criteria, endpoint included, follow-up duration, sample size, patient characteristics, and MRI characteristics. Fernal plots and Eagers test demonstrate no significant publication biases for all four major outcomes and most subgroups of life-threatening arrhythmias and MACE. During a mean follow-up of 2.9 years, life-threatening arrhythmias occurred 654 times. MACE was found 842 times. Cardiovascular death occurred in 76 patients, and all cause death was found for 160 patients. Poor ORs and race and the compound endpoints of five, four major clinical outcomes are presented in forest plot. The presence of LGE predicted the endpoint of life-threatening arrhythmias with a poor OR of 5.1. As for this part of research, sensitivity analysis confirmed the robustness of the results. The poor OR for the endpoint of maze was 5.2. As for the group of both life-threatening arrhythmias and maze. Subgroup analysis was used for, firstly, patients with a different kind of cardiomyopathy that is ischemic and non-ischemic. Secondly, quantitative and visual analysis, which represents different ways to judge the presence of LGE. Finally, patients who only received ICD rather than CRTD, and patients who only received for primary prevention for sudden cardiac death. For the endpoint of cardiovascular mortality and all-cause mortality, without significant heterogeneity between studies, the poor OR was separately 2.4 and 2.1.
In conclusion, the presence of LGE may worsen prognosis for adverse cardiovascular events in both ischemic and non-ischemic cardiomyopathy patients who benefit more from SAD. Thus, LGE should gain more extensive attention as appropriate criteria for SAD implantation. That's all. Thanks for your listening.